I, Jesus, have set my angels to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come, let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will let him take the water of life freely. Listen while you still can hear Listen while you still can hear The Master's call The Master's call
good to be here today. Certainly thank God for all that he has done already. Certainly thank God for each and every one of you. As we again look at this word today, coming out of the book of Luke, the 8th chapter. That's Luke, the 8th chapter. And if you would join me in the 34th verse, I want to thank um, Reverend Hayward for reading the first few verses. But we're going to start at Luke 8 and the 34th verse. And if you don't have a Bible, uh, the ushers are coming down the aisle now. Would you grab a Bible? Or you may have a, a Bible app on your phone or your iPad. That is perfectly good. Uh, and we'll look at this word together coming out of the book of Luke, the 8th chapter, and starting in the 34th verse. That's Luke 8, verse number 34. Luke 8, verse number 34. 34. And this, I'm reading the New King James Version, and this is what the Lord says in his word. When those who fed them pigs saw what was happening, they fell and they fled and told it to the city in the country. Then they went out to see what had happened and came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had departed sitting at the feet of Jesus clothed in his right mind, and they were afraid. They also, and they also who had seen it, told them by what means he who had the demon possessed was healed. Then the whole multitude of the surrounding regions of the Gadarenes asked him to depart from them, for they were seized with fear. And he got in the boat and returned. Now the man from whom the demons had departed begged him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, find in verse 39, Return to your own house and tell what great things God has done for you. And he went his way and proclaimed throughout the whole city what great things Jesus had done for him. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We're going to speak today from this subject, how to win the spiritual war within. How to win the spiritual war within. One more time, how to win the spiritual war within. Would you bow your heads? God, we thank you once again as we come today to honor you and to glorify you. God, we stand not on our own strength or on our own wisdom, but we stand, God, in the name of the Holy Spirit. And we ask you to hide this preacher behind your cross. God, let your people see you. You be elevated. For the reality is, Lord, we need a word from the Lord. We cannot live by this bread of this earth, but we live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord. So thank you now for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray that all the saints of God say amen. amen. We were devastated on last weekend to hear about the troubles in Charlottesville, Virginia. A 32-year-old woman was killed. 19 others were injured, five of them critically injured, when a car rammed into a, gr a group of counter-protesters during the white supremacy rally in Charlottesville, Virginia. A helicopter was crashed that killed a pilot and another passenger that was linked to this rally uh, that was introduced, that was uh, presented by the state police. Three people died, 19 people injured in the hands of a 20-year-old white male supremacy believer who drove his car into a crowd of protesters. And you must ask ourselves, what is wrong with our society? When hate becomes commonplace, when violence become common news. And I believe as a preacher of the gospel, I, know I have to try to see the current events in the lenses of the gospel. Yes. And um, I suggest that this 20-year-old James Alex Fields was filled with hate. Yes. And he was filled and running over with hate. And if you don't deal with hate, Amen. Praise the Lord. 
whenever a person allow, is allowed to uh, let hate take over his mind, take over his heart, take over his soul, what that person has done is allowed the devil to reign. And this person is lost or is losing their spiritual war. And remember, what the devil wants to do is to reign in a place where God is supposed to reign. So I, I'm just saying today, you know, white supremacy groups who preach hate is allowing the devil to reign. Uh, Muslim supremacy groups that preach hate is allowing the devil to reign. Islamic supremacy groups that preach hate, they're allowing the devil to reign. Black supremacy groups uh, that preach hate is allowing the devil to reign. Can I get real clear with everybody? Because un unless we understand this, God put it this way, Jesus put it this way, the devil comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. But we got another option. We got another option, y'all. And that other option is I have come that I might have life and have it more abundantly. See, life is love. Life is joy. Life is peace. And so this is what uh, this text is really all about. And so the reason that Jesus came on this earth, the reason that we have the word of God, the reason that we're standing in the church and sitting in the church is because God is trying to get us to win a spiritual warfare. And I want you to know right now, you can't win a spiritual warfare unless you have God in it. Amen, amen. And so uh, right here, I like the way when Jesus was speaking to Peter right before, uh, right when Jesus was, was arrested, he said to Peter, he said, Peter, Peter, behold, that Satan has desired to have you, that he might sift you as wheat. Sometimes we don't understand all of the environments of things that are going on on the inside and around us, but I'm glad that when he said that, he said, but I have prayed for you. What I'm trying to tell you today is that you can, you can step up and you can put your chest out and say, you know what? That might be a whole lot of stuff going on in this world that I don't understand. But I'm so glad to know Jesus prayed for me. If you want to see where he prayed for you, look at John 16, and it tells us that Jesus prayed for us. But I'm here today, and I, you know, to put all this in perspective, and so as we look at this, we ought to praise God today that we may not be consumed with hate or, or stealing or killing or destroying. We church people, amen. amen. But we have some thoughts and actions that are not like Jesus. We have some tendencies and proclivities that are not like Jesus. We have some sins and some behaviors that are not like Jesus. And we might not be consumed 100% with the devil, but 5% of the devil is too much. Amen. Amen. So sometimes I think we come into the house and we kind of think, well, you know, uh, I'm good. I'm okay. But no, we want you to look a little deeper at what's going on on the inside of you. You know, I said at 8 o'clock, I said, these are the types of sermons that I don't expect to get any, any, any uh, shouts because we need to speak today. But I want you to know today, it is real that we are in a spiritual warfare. And let me, let me get it clear with you, for we, not, we do not wrestle against our husband and our wives. We don't wrestle against the boss and the co-workers. And we don't wrestle against people in the ministry. We wrestle against what? That we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities? With rulers of darkness and high places. Unless we understand that we cannot win a spiritual warfare unless God comes in and speaks. And so that's the reason that we're here today. I know we thought we came just to hear a good song here or there, but we came to hear the Lord speak. And so right here in this text, I like what it says in Luke 8. We've been looking at Luke 8. I preached this probably about three sermons out of Luke 8 I preached in the last six months. You probably don't even know, but that's okay. But first thing is that I like the way uh, uh, Jesus talks about, first thing he talked about was sowing seed in the kingdom. Because we got to understand, first of all, y'all, we're kingdom people. And we got principles and values that comes out of the kingdom. So not only that, but I also uh, like when he talked about the illustration of the lamp. He talked about who are the true family. The true family of Jesus Christ are not just those who were his mother and father, but he said those who believe and trust and, and live by the will of God. So after that, Jesus and his disciples get on a boat. 
And he says that on the boat, when they got on the boat, Jesus got a little rest, but they went right through the storm. When they got through the storm, they got to another place. And you would think that at that point, they would be okay. But if you look at the text, uh, the text goes and tells us something. Now they, got, they made it to the other side. And verse number 26 says, and they sailed to the, to the country of Gadar Gadarenes. And it says in verse 27, when Jesus stepped out of, the, out, out of the boat on the land, there met him a certain man from the city. Now, can I, can I talk to you right here? So the first thing I can tell you, if you are to win a spiritual war, you must find a way to get in the presence of Jesus. You must find a way to get into the presence of Jesus. And the first thing I see here, Jesus steps out on the boat, and the first person that comes to him is a man that got problems. And Jesus steps out on the boat, and the first person that came to him was a man that had issues. And, and so, but this man had enough sense. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm not just talking about a man. I'm talking about a woman and a, and, and a, and a man sitting up here right now today. He had enough sense to get to the presence of Jesus. Because you understand, when you get in the presence of Jesus, there's power. Well, hold on a minute. Well, I know it's good. You see your brothers and sisters. You know, you see your pastor. That's good. You see the choir did a great job. Praise the Lord. But I need you to know there's a greater power here today. And his name is Jesus. And I guarantee you, if you get in the presence of Jesus, he will, he will make things all right. Do I have a witness in the house that, that don't mind saying, you know, I came because, you know, I didn't come because everything was right. But I need some believers in the house that don't mind getting intimate with Jesus. You ain't got to get intimate with me, but get intimate with Jesus. And say, you know what? There's some stuff in me that needs to come out of me. Oh, you know, I think when the real church get together, when the real church come together, we'll be able to be, see a victory because if there's something in you, God says, listen, I can get it out of you. And so right here in this text... Right here in this text, I love the way he says it. This man found his way in the presence of the Lord. Anybody glad to be in the presence of the Lord today? Just, just wave your hand. We're in the presence of Jesus right now. And when you're in the presence of Jesus, don't you think that everything, things are going to work out for your good, but he might have to do some things that might not, you might not feel good about it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so here it is. We have to get in the presence of the Lord. In the presence of the Lord, is what we got to do not only on Sundays, but we got to do it on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Because the power that we have against the enemy is being in the presence of Jesus. That's why we have personal devotions every day. That's why we have, you know, you want to know why we do Bible studies, why we do Sunday schools, why you come to Oak Grove Baptist Church, because we are in a war. But I got some news for you. We have, we are, not only are we going to win, but we are winning. Oh, that don't sound like nobody winning to me. Y'all don't sound like y'all winning. I don't know. Praise God. So it goes on here, and I believe the next point that I want to make here is to win, a, to win a spiritual war, you must reveal the real you, the bad and ugly you, when you come into the presence of the Lord. You must reveal the real you. Look at verse number 27. There met him a certain man from a city who had demons for a long time. And he wore no clothes, nor did he live in a house, but he was in a tomb. And I, when, when he described this here, when, when the devil comes in and he takes rule over your life, he will make you look like a fool. Hallelujah. This man had no, he had no clothes. He, he didn't live in a house. He lived with dead people. He was wild. He was like a wild animal. But here's the reality of the Lord. The man, this man might have been living like that, but the man was created in the image of God. And he was created to live a life that's full and, and, and free of God. But he chose <laughs> to live like an animal. I can't get no help in the house. I know y'all ain't going to work with me. He chose, he chose, he chose to live a life of a wild person, although he was created to be the light of the world. Oh, y'all ain't going to like me here today. Are you living like a wild person? Uh, are you living like a whore? Although you were created as a woman and a man of God for good works, but you are not doing what God has called you to do. Are you living like an addict? Although you were created to be filled with the Spirit of the Lord, and, but he said, but be not drunk with wine, be not drunk with smoke, 
Be not drunk with cigarettes. Don't be not drunk with chocolate. Be not drunk with sugar. Oh, I wish I had some real, you know, we need some. Somebody say, we need some help in the house here today. And so here it is. We need to, we come today because we got to understand who we are and who we belong to. That's my brother right there. That's his word there. Amen. We are living, some of us are living as a loser, and you were not designed to live as a loser because you were created to win. How do I know that? Because it said, but thanks be to God, which gives us what? Victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. So here this man, he comes, he had to show the real, real him, the real ugly. And sometimes we need to get intimate with God and say, God, here am I. Now, I'm not talking about my brother, my sister, my husband, my wife, but I'm coming because I need you. And so this man was willing to, to show him, to show the, the ugly and the bad. But the other thing I see in the text, to win the spiritual war, you must identify the real enemy within you. There's a real enemy within us. Verse number 27 says, a certain man from the city who had a demon. And Jesus commanded the unclean spirit to come out of this man. And he would break the chains. If they tried to bind him up, he would break the train, chain and be driven out in the wilderness by a demon. Now, we're living in an age where people don't talk about that no more. And shut up, don't preach about devil. As a matter of fact, we have gotten so sophisticated that we've taken out of the theological discussion hell and the devil. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, anyhow. But I want you to know that uh, uh, when you look at things that are happening in this world, just uh, anybody glad to be able to, maybe anybody going to see the eclipse? Anybody glad to see the eclipse? I, I, I'm glad to see the eclipse because I see God in that. I see God because he's, he's allowing the moon to come to the right, in the right place between the earth and the sun and give us darkness. But I need you to know today that there's also another, another side of the story. There's an enemy that wants to create havoc in your house. And we need, to, we need to identify him as who he is. And so here it is right here. That's why when you know, I don't get surprised when a 21-year-old 20, kills nine Christians in a Bible study uh, at the uh, historic Ebenezer uh, uh, Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church in Char Charleston. Because I know that the enemy is running rapid. But I want you to know, I'm getting ready, I'm getting ready to tell you, tell you about this enemy because his time is, is drawing short. Can I say this? I'm going to say this about the real enemy, the source of all hate, all stealing, all killing, uh, and destruction comes from the devil. The source of every envy, backbiting, gossip, destruction, uh, scandalizing comes from the devil. The source of every spiritual sin in this world comes from the devil. And so let's get real clear what the devil wants to do is to take away our joy. As a matter of fact, he wants to take our minds and our thoughts. But he can't take them unless you give it to him. And so you got plenty of control. So uh, uh, right here, well, how, what are you, what are you, what are you talking about all this stuff, preacher? And we just, we, not, we need a little bit more background. Let me give you some background because I'm talking about the devil today. But in Revelation 12, 7, Revelation 12, 7 says, And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his, uh, his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought against his angels. But guess what? Michael prevailed. And what happened then, they said there was no place for the devil in heaven. Now, I don't understand what God is doing all the time. I wish he hadn't sent him to earth. But that's where he is. It's right here in the text. I'm just trying to open your eyes. It's right. He said, and the great, the great uh, dragon was cast out, and he was cast out on where? The earth. And his angels were cast out with him. Now, the devil is on the earth to cause havoc. To cause, uh, uh, to cause chaos and destruction. And he, like I said, he wants to use people. And this is what I'm trying to tell you today is that I like the way Peter says it. He says, be, be sober, be vigilant because the adversary, the devil, is roaring around like a lion, seeking what? Whom he might devour. But I want you to know, he, can't, he don't have no control over you unless you give it to him. Y'all remember Flip Wilson, right? He said, what? The devil made... That ain't completely true in a theological sense. Because the devil can't make you do nothing. But if you give way over to him, he will leave you high, dry, and looking sad, and never knowing what's, what hit you. Let me, can I expose the devil today? I'm just talking about the devil. I'm just talking about the devil today. The devil is the enemy of God and God's people. 
The devil wants to possess you, control your faculties, and cause you to act abnormal. You know, that's what this guy did. He was, uh, he was acting like an animal. But he wasn't created to be an animal. He was created to be the son of God. The devil will cause you to lose your sense of shame and consciousness. He will cause you to enjoy the attention of public exposure and the embarrassment of others. In other words, let me do what I'm trying to say here. He will cause you to really like to see what, how others and their life and what it looks like. Uh, let, let me let me let me roll. Let me, let me, I'm trying. I'm trying to get there. Uh, uh, today it seems like it is very uh, it's very uh, uh, trendy to put your dirty stuff out there on Facebook. And guess who like to read it? Mm hmm I think they kind of. I think you're getting to what I'm saying. And that's why you know we are tuned into reality TV. Why? Because we see the rich and famous. I can't believe they did that. What? And y'all know y'all don't said that. I mean, they just been watching all of this. That's why they have tabloids. Because the enemy now is trying to present himself as, you know what? This is what fame really is. The devil is a liar. I tell you, it's, it's not anything there. But rest assured, God has a control. He's in control. And at the right time, God's going to deal with the devil and, and once and for all. In Revelation 21, it says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having a key of the, bo the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hands. He laid hands on that dragon, on that serpent, on that devil, on that Satan, and he bound him up. And you keep on reading, it says that uh, uh, the devil was this, that deceived uh, them was cast into the lake of fire, of brimstone. Let me tell y'all something. As sure as I'm sitting here today, there is something called hell. And there is fire and brimstone. But if you keep on reading, you'll see in Romans and Revelation 20, 14, he says, and then the death and hell were cast into the lake of the fire. That was a second death for the, whoever did not have their name written in the book of the Lamb. If you don't know Jesus Christ who has uh, pardoned you, forgiven you of your sins, I want you to know there's a plenty room in hell. Oh, man, praise the Lord. I don't know why God gave me some stuff to preach sometimes, but I have to say what he tells me to say, whether you like it or not. But we ain't got to go that way because we're going to make a different decision. That's why we got the word. Amen. That's why you got your pastor. The pastor will look at every, you know what, every scripture. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you're in a church and they ain't preaching the whole gospel, every scripture is for inspiration, is for reproof. You don't know, you got to look at that word sometimes and say, Lord, have mercy on me because I got to get my stuff right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Don't y'all shout me down. Don't shout me down. Amen. So to win this spiritual war within, let Jesus destroy your demons once and for all. Let Jesus destroy your demons once and for all. Verse 29 says, and he commanded the unclean spirit to come out of this man. When Jesus spoke a command, this demon had to go. You know, I'm so glad to know that we're in a praying church. And that's what we do. We call on the name of the Lord because there are some stuff that need to be out. Unclean spirits got to go. Amen. And so when Jesus declares it, I want you to know that's it. Can, we give you, can you need a witness of somebody who was, who was freed from a demon? Mary Magdalene. And when they introduced Mary Magdalene, first thing you see, who is the first person Jesus appeared to when he uh, was resurrected? Mary Magdalene, but he always, when he introduced her, he always said, but she had seven demons, but she ain't got no seven demons no more, amen, praise the Lord, hallelujah, why, because she met Jesus, somebody say, she met Jesus, and when you meet Jesus, I want you to know, he will make everything all right, can I get a, can I get one amen for those who know he'll make it all right? And I praise the Lord today that, that, that Jesus has commanded some unclean spirits to come out of us. Well, let me get real. To come out of me. Because the reality is that the reason that I'm saved is because he allows some stuff to come out. I can't get it. The reason I'm saved is allowed that he, he, called by, he called me by my name. Here's what I'm saying. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth him shall not perish. Perish of what? Unclean spirits. 
but they shall what? Have everlasting life. I feel like singing my song right now. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. From the cross to the grave. Oh, Jesus saves. Praise the Lord. Let me get finished here with this place. But after this, I had to let him know that Jesus saves. Somebody say, Jesus saves. So my fifth point to win the spiritual war, don't let your dollars and your material things keep you bound. I'm right here in the text. I'm right here in the text. Here it is right here, verse number 30. He says, and, and Jesus demanded, what is your name? The man said, legions. And he says, because he was filled with many devils. And, and, and the demons kept begging Jesus not to send them into the bottomless pit. And this happened because there was a large herd of pigs uh, feeding on the, high, on the hillside nearby. And the demon begged him to let them enter the pigs. And Jesus gave them permission. This is a passage of scripture I always have some trouble with. Because I'm trying to figure out my Jesus now. Wait a minute. Why didn't you just send them to the abyss where they're going to go anyway? And I started thinking about this. Uh, why did he allow these demons to talk into, into going to pigs? Well, it's pretty simple. Because what Jesus wants to show us is that when you fool with the devil, you end up dead. I know, I know this might not sound good. It may not feel good. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's what I'm trying to say. He, he, he went into the pigs. And what did the pigs do? The devil comes but to steal. He just showed that. He just showed that. He just showed that. But I have come. Somebody say, I, Jesus has come that we may have life. And have it, what? More abundantly. Somebody go ahead and praise God for the abundant life that we have right here. But the other thing I see in the text, and I was trying to figure this out, is that now, uh, okay, so the pigs uh, died, and guess what? The people got mad. It's right here in the text. I'm looking at verse number 34. It said, when they found out, so when the herds went back and told the people what had happened, the people rushed out to see uh, what had happened. The crowd got uh, soon gathered around Jesus, and they saw this man, and all the people in the region of Garadin begged Jesus to go, leave us alone. Now, what in the world? They see this man who used to be bound, but now he's free. Why in the world would you ask Jesus to leave? Can anybody help me on this? Anybody help me on this? Well, here's what I discovered. This is what I believe. The problem with the people was that they saw Jesus, though pigs, was their livelihood. You know, we're good with Jesus unless you start messing with our money. You ain't no messing with my money. You mess with my money, you know. Well, you mess with my job. Well, you mess with my money. And see, that's the problem with the president of the United States. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I just got to say this because we ain't just interested in jobs. We ain't just interested in the stock market. But we want our children to go to a decent school. I can't get no help here. We want, we want health care. I mean, there's a lot that we need. But we have allowed the dollar to rule. Amen. Amen. But I came to share with you today if they, if they had only understood what Jesus was there to do. See, what they should have been doing, instead of asking Jesus to leave, they should have been asking Jesus to stay and heal the people. Instead of asking Jesus to leave, they should have asked Jesus to stay and deliver some people. Anybody want to ask Jesus to stay? Lord, stay in my heart, stay in my mind. Stay in me, God, because I need you to reign over my heart and reign over my mind. And I'm going to go ahead and claim, God, that I'm totally yours. I'm not going to let the dollar keep me from loving you. I'm not going to let my 10% keep me from loving you. Because he says, either, you know, he says, uh, you know, he said, that you cannot serve God and manna. Either you will love one and hate the other. But he says, wherever your heart is, oh my goodness, grace the Lord. <laughs> I, heard the, I think I heard the revivalist say, I'm going to look at everybody's checkbook. I'm going to see where you really spend your money. Because what? When you, when you find out where you spend your money, that's where what? Your heart is. Amen. Ouch. Hallelujah. Let me go ahead on then. Let me go. So let me wrap this up. Finally, the, to win this spiritual war, you must sit at Jesus' feet and be clothed in your right mind. In verse number 35, it says, and they went out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found this man who used to be all messed up. But now he's sitting at the feet of Jesus. And he's clothed in his right mind. This man who used to be a demon-possessed man. 
now he's sitting at the feet of Jesus and clothed in his right mind. This man who used to be crazy, but not anymore because now he's sitting at the feet of Jesus and clothed in his right mind. This man who used to be cuckoo, now he's sitting at the foot of Jesus and clothed in his right mind. This man who used to be living with the dead, but not anymore. Somebody say, not anymore. Now he's sitting at the feet of Jesus and clothed in his right mind. This man who used to be a terrorist, now he's sitting at the feet of Jesus and what? Clothed in his right mind. I need somebody to go ahead and testify if you don't mind. I'm not just talking about this man, but anybody can say you're talking to me right now. Maybe you used to run with the wrong crowd. Maybe you were blinded by the enemy. Maybe you were tore up from the floor up. Uh, maybe you was lost in your way of sin. Uh, but I'm so glad uh, that now you're sitting at the feet of Jesus. Uh, if you're glad about it, say amen. I'm trying to tell you that I don't know about you, but he bought me from a mighty long way. And I'm so glad. Uh, can I get some glad people in the house say amen? I'm so glad. Uh, as I close, I'm so glad that I heard this, this, this demon uh, testimony. And I heard your testimony. But I'm glad to know I got my own testimony. See, I was sinking deep in sin, far from a peaceful shore, very stain deeply stained within, uh, sinking to rise no more. <laughs> but I, I, the Lord saw me, uh, and he said, Preacher, it's time for you to sit at my feet. Uh, and I want to clothe you with righteousness. Uh, I want to clothe you with holiness. Uh, I want to clothe you with peace. Uh, somebody say, praise the Lord. Uh, he's talking about me right now. Amen. Here's what I'm saying. There's hope for everybody in your house. There's hope for your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren. Let me tell y'all something. This is the place where God's going to deliver. This is the place where he says to us, listen, demon, get out of them. And reclaim them as the child of God. What a powerful word. Give God praise for the word of God. Give God praise. Maybe there's somebody here today. You know, we're talking about some things that we don't, we don't talk about a lot. But I want you to know that no devil in hell can keep you from the love of God. And if you're here today, if you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, if you don't, uh, you haven't been baptized or you haven't confessed Jesus Christ, this is the time to come now. You can come just as you are. No need to clean anything up. That's another thing we got to stop telling people. Well, when I get to get together, you ain't going to ever get it together. How do I know? Because you ain't got it together yet. But, you know, he says, if you would just step forward and just trust me and believe me. He says, the first thing I want you to do is to be baptized. But if you're already baptized, I want you in a church. You know, and again, we're living in a time where people say, you don't need it for church no more. But they don't know how late in the evening it really is. But I know that if you are looking for a church home, and I don't express, I don't say that this is the perfect church, but I guarantee you that if you come, the Lord will, will, you will, he will feed you. Uh, he will support you. The, this family will, will pray for you, and we will love on you. We're going to ask you to please stand right now. The door of the church will open. Would you please come just as you 